Swine cholera, also known as classical swine fever CSF, was first described in the early 19th century. The disease was recognized for its significant impact on swine populations. However, the causative agent, a pestivirus in the Flaviviridae family, was not identified until much later. The first detailed descriptions of the disease date back to the mid-1800s, with more specific scientific identification and understanding of the virus occurring in the 20th century. The exact year of the disease's initial discovery is difficult to pinpoint due to the historical nature of the records, but it has been known to affect swine for over two centuries. Swine cholera, known scientifically as classical swine fever CSF, is a highly contagious disease that affects pigs through various routes of infection. The primary mode of transmission is through direct contact between infected and healthy pigs, facilitated by the exchange of bodily fluids such as saliva, feces, and urine, or through contact with the tissues of infected animals. This direct spread is most common in environments where pigs are kept in close proximity to each other, enabling the virus to move easily from one animal to another. In addition to direct contact, swine cholera can also spread through indirect means. Contaminated objects or environments, including feed, water, equipment, and even the clothing and boots of farm workers, can harbor the virus and infect pigs that come into contact with these contaminated surfaces. This highlights the importance of stringent biosecurity measures in preventing the spread of the disease. The virus responsible for swine cholera can also be transmitted through the air via aerosols, particularly in densely populated pig farming conditions. This airborne transmission, though less common, emphasizes the need for adequate ventilation and spacing in pig housing facilities to reduce the risk of spread. Oral ingestion of contaminated materials is another route through which pigs can contract swine cholera. Consuming infected meat, carcasses, or coming into contact with contaminated feed and water sources can lead to infection, underlining the need for control and monitoring of pig diets and food sources. Moreover, the disease can be passed from infected sows to their offspring during pregnancy, leading to congenital infections that can severely impact the health and viability of piglets. This vertical transmission route necessitates careful management and monitoring of breeding animals to prevent the intrauterine spread of the virus. Although not a primary transmission pathway, there is evidence to suggest that certain blood-feeding insects may act as mechanical vectors, facilitating the virus's spread between pigs. This potential vector-borne transmission route adds another layer of complexity to the disease's epidemiology and control. To combat swine cholera, Comprehensive biosecurity measures, including vaccination where applicable, strict control of pig movements, implementation of quarantine and culling strategies for infected and exposed animals, and rigorous sanitation and disinfection practices, are essential. These measures aim to interrupt the various transmission routes of the virus, thereby preventing the spread of the disease within and between pig populations. Swine cholera, also known as classical swine fever CSF, is a contagious viral disease that affects pigs with a variety of symptoms, reflecting the disease's severity and the infected animal's condition. Initially, infected pigs may present with a high fever, which is often the first sign of the illness. This fever is typically accompanied by a loss of appetite, leading to reduced food intake and subsequent weight loss. As the disease progresses, pigs become lethargic and weak, showing a noticeable decrease in activity and energy levels. One of the more distinctive symptoms of swine cholera is the appearance of red or purple skin discolorations. These blotches, particularly visible on the ears, belly, and extremities, are due to hemorrhages under the skin, indicative of the disease's systemic impact. Gastrointestinal symptoms, including diarrhea and vomiting, may also occur, further debilitating the affected pigs and potentially leading to dehydration. Respiratory issues manifest as coughing and difficulty breathing, suggesting the virus's effect on the respiratory system. Additionally, infected pigs might show signs of eye discharges and inflammation, contributing to the overall discomfort and distress of the animals. In more severe cases, swine cholera can affect the central nervous system, resulting in neurological signs such as tremors, lack of coordination, convulsions, and even paralysis. These symptoms highlight the virus's capacity to cause widespread damage within the infected animal's body. The disease can rapidly progress, 
leading to sudden death in acute cases, often before many of these symptoms have a chance to develop fully. This aspect of swine cholera makes early detection and intervention challenging but crucial for managing and controlling outbreaks. Given the range of symptoms and the potential for mild or asymptomatic cases, especially in subacute or chronic forms of the disease, laboratory testing is essential for accurate diagnosis. Controlling swine cholera involves implementing strict biosecurity measures, adhering to vaccination programs in regions where the disease is endemic, and employing culling strategies for infected and exposed animals to halt the virus's spread. Classical swine fever CSF, commonly known as pig cholera, presents significant challenges in treatment due to the lack of a specific cure for the viral infection. The management of CSF thus centers around preventive measures, stringent biosecurity practices, and strategies aimed at controlling and eradicating the disease. Preventive vaccination plays a pivotal role in safeguarding pig populations against CSF. By administering vaccines where they are available and recommended, farmers can significantly reduce the risk of CSF outbreaks. The vaccination protocols are designed to induce immunity in the pig population, thereby minimizing the incidence of the disease. Biosecurity measures are critical in preventing the introduction and spread of CSF within and between farms. These measures include controlling access to pig areas, ensuring the sanitation of facilities, equipment, and vehicles, and implementing effective quarantine procedures for new or returning animals. Such practices help to create barriers against the virus, protecting pig herds from infection. Surveillance and prompt reporting of any suspected cases of CSF to veterinary authorities form another cornerstone of disease management. Early detection is crucial for the rapid implementation of control measures, which can prevent the spread of the disease to other herds and regions. In regions where CSF is identified, controlling the movement of pigs is essential to prevent the transmission of the virus. Restrictions on pig trade and transport, especially from infected areas, help to contain outbreaks and reduce the risk of widespread disease dissemination. In the unfortunate event of an outbreak, the culling of infected and potentially exposed pigs is often necessary to control the disease's spread. This measure, coupled with the proper disposal of carcasses and contaminated materials, is a difficult but necessary step in eradicating the virus from affected populations. Following an outbreak, thorough cleaning and disinfection of the premises are imperative to eliminate any residual virus. A period during which no pigs are housed on the premises may be recommended to ensure the environment is free of the virus before reintroducing animals. While direct treatment of CSF is not available, providing supportive care to infected animals can help alleviate symptoms and improve welfare. This includes maintaining adequate hydration, offering easily digestible food, and ensuring a comfortable environment. However, it's important to remember that such care does not cure the disease, and affected animals remain infectious. Ultimately, the management of classical swine fever relies on a combination of prevention, prompt action in the face of outbreaks, and adherence to biosecurity measures to protect pig populations from this serious disease.